Good afternoon. Thanks to everybody for being here today. Uh, we're thrilled to see uh, an interest in our economic impact study. I want to make a special thanks and a special uh, welcome to our distinguished guests, any distinguished guests who have joined us here today. Thank you all for coming. I'm Dr. Karen Hunter Anderson. I'm the Executive Director of the Illinois Community College Board. We're the state coordinating board for our Illinois community colleges. We're home to 48 community colleges in 39 districts here in Illinois, and we're the third largest community college system in the country. Uh, I like to think that even though we're the third largest, we're the best in the country, and we're also the best in the world. Uh, we serve nearly one million students through credit and non-credit courses every year through our Illinois Community College system. That tells you that we're an integral part, a very integral part, of the state system of higher education. Uh, our community colleges provide high quality, accessible, cost effective educational opportunities for individuals and for the communities that we serve. In 2013, the Community College Board contracted with Northern Illinois University Center for Governmental Studies to do an in-depth study of the economic impact of the Illinois Community College system. One of the objectives of this study was to empirically document the economic benefits of community colleges for students, for communities, for, and for employers. The Illinois Community College System Economic Impact Study Report was released in November of 2014. And it provided not only local district, individual district level analysis, but also a statewide uh, level analysis. The report is particularly unique from other state and national uh, education impact studies because student level, level data were matched with employee level wage data. And we were, by doing this match, we were able to determine students' economic impacts, not only through their employment, but also through their individual earning gains. Today, we've gathered you all here today to hear from an employer, from community college graduate, and from college presidents on the substantial economic impact and benefits that community colleges have on state, on the state, and most importantly, on the West Central Illinois region. I'm very proud that Illinois community college graduates are staying in Illinois after they graduate. The study confirmed that nine out of 10 graduates, community college graduates, remain in Illinois after completing their college uh, careers, and they contribute to our state's economy by staying in Illinois. We've, we've talked to Illinois business and industries, and we found that they're benefiting greatly from the additional skills that our students bring to them, uh, that they bring to the workforce. And we've also determined that at some point over the last 12 years, 74% of Illinois employers have hired a community college graduate. Community college graduates are employed in every field from manufacturing, public safety, uh, healthcare, information technology, and business, and just about any other career path you could name. Community college students are everywhere not only in Illinois, but there are also wonderful ambassadors to us, for us, to the rest of the world. To speak more on the impact of community college graduates in the workforce, I'd like to welcome Shelley Wynn, who is the Executive Director for Workforce Management and Employee Relations at the OSF Healthcare System. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to come and represent OSF Healthcare, but also represent um, healthcare in general as it relates to community colleges. <laughs> OSF Healthcare, along with other healthcare systems such as Unity Point, are spending really a great deal of time um, strategizing and looking at how do we impact um, our staffing uh, five years, 10 years from now. So putting together a lot of workforce management structures and really forecasting analysis to help us manage the clinical demands um, of, o of OSF healthcare and healthcare in general. 
we know that the baby boomers are late 50s and 60s. So therefore, we know that the clinical um, expertise and knowledge that is leaving our doors is tremendous. So as we work with community um, colleges, it is essential that we partner and collaborate on ways to ensure that those clinical staff are there, and not only just clinical, but business, IT, most of you are aware that healthcare is really moving into a very strong IT structure. So as we begin to look at those type of demands, we have to really look at the full gamut of uh, professionals coming out. Most healthcare organizations focus on hospital settings, but as most of you are probably familiar with, our hospital settings are turning into ambulatory and outpatient settings. As we look at the challenges around population health and really where healthcare is going. So ensuring that we have the right skill set is critical in each of our uh, areas. So for OSF Healthcare, if you look at where we're located at, it's the Peoria region, it's the Pontiac and Bloomington region, the Rockford region, and Galesburg, Monmouth, um, and Kiwani region. So if you really look at the community colleges that are in those regions and the uh, amount of availability that we have to individuals coming out is tremendous. And such a partnership is really critical as we move forward. Um, just to give you a, a brief example, um, most of our HR recruitment teams uh, sit on some type of advisory board with our community colleges. Um, we are in collaboration with Unity Point and Pekin in this area for healthcare. Um, if you say a youth where they can come and experience healthcare, because remember, it's all about starting in the youth ages these days at the high school level and at that type of level. So really collaborating with our community um, colleges to do that, and that is March 17th, by the way. So as we look at the type of um, industry that we're currently in in healthcare, let's talk a little bit about um, individuals that are able to come out into um, our, uh, our system. So let's look at respiratory therapists who are able to come out and make in the mid-30s. So think about that for a minute. I get out of college and I get to go to ICC and become a respiratory therapist, do my clinicals at St. Francis Medical Center, and then be able to come out and make in the mid-30s. So I think that's a really good testimony to um, the type of individual surgical techs, also um, in high demand as well. OTAs and PTA programs, therapy is hard to recruit for. So for an OSF healthcare system like ours, um, critical need in those community colleges. RNs, um, we currently hired 10% out of the last class out of ICC at St. Francis Medical Center alone. So if you look at that at a system perspective, um, with 1,700 employees and several thousand RNs, think about 10% of them being hired from community. And RNs come out and make uh, in the uh, mid to low 20s uh, hourly starting out. So think about that and as you're um, uh, thinking about the economics of our communities. Um, some other areas are CNAs um, that we really uh, continually recruit for, and those individuals are in the mid-20s. So um, again, a really good modality coming out of our community colleges. MOAs, medical assistants, coders, billers, um, all of those type of um, really professions that come out of a community um, a college. So from, from an employer's perspective, um, I can speak from healthcare, but you can see the impact that really having a, a strong community college base and the ability for individuals to uh, come out and get started in the workforce and begin to develop their careers. So again, we just uh, appreciate the opportunity to come speak on this today and really the impact that it has on um, OSF Healthcare and other health care organizations in this uh, community. Thank you. Our next speaker is Dr. John Irwin, who is the president of uh, Illinois Central College here in Peoria. And I would like to also thank him for hosting the press conference today. He's going to talk specifically about um, the benefit of Illinois Community Colleges on an employee's or on a student's income. Uh, as the host college, I want to extend my uh, welcome to uh, Shelley uh, for representing, uh, obviously, the business sector for us. And Rob Widmer, uh, president of Heartland Community College, Kurt Oldfield from Spoon River, and to my far left, Thomas Aguilar, who is 
not only an alum, uh, he's currently on the foundation board for Illinois Central College and is a friend. And so I appreciate you being able to attend and share your student perspective. And Karen, thank you uh, for being here and your leadership for the system. Uh, I'm going to follow a pattern. There are four categories I'm going to talk about. And within each of those categories, I'm going to share state level data. And then I'm going to drill down into Illinois Central College data for each of those four. So be patient with me. Uh, and I shared with somebody earlier, I feel like I'm a baseball statistician a little bit because I have some statistics. <laughs> but listen carefully, and I think uh, you'll conclude, as I have, that this is really important data. And it's also a, a slice from the study, as some others are going to share with you as well. First, we're going to look at program completers. And we looked at uh, students from FY 2011. And the Illinois Community College statewide data says that program completers from 2011 working full time earned more than $35,000 in their post-completion year. Secondly, that full-year workers that were not full-time students earned an average of $26,000 in FY 2011. And lastly, in this category, uh, transfer students often, of course, delay their employment because they're going on to the university to continue their education. And they report very low or sometimes even no earnings. So that's state level data in this category of program completers. At Illinois Central College, we have specific data in this area. ICC program completers from 2011 working full time earned roughly $34,000 in their completion year. This represents an increase of about 5% above average real earnings for ICC's FY2000 completers and well above the 1% increase for similar students across Illinois for the same period. And secondly, ICC program completers who were full year workers, not full time, earned an average of just over $25,000 in FY 2011. Now, while this represented a 6% decline in average real earnings from FY 2000, it was less than half of the state's overall decline of the 14% for similar students. Keep in mind, we had a historical recession, 09, and 2008. So that is an impact also in some of the data points. The second area I want to highlight for us is the relationship between credit hours and earnings gained. Illinois Community College statewide data says there's a strong positive relationship between credit hours and earning gains. Overall, earning gains average $159 per credit hour. Secondly, the average annual earnings gains for all Illinois Community College exiters, that is program completers, and those who did not return to college the following year, this is in FY 2011 again, was $2,948 or $159 per credit hour. ICC, Illinois Central College specific data, the average annual earnings gains for ICC exiters was $5,347 or $223 per credit hour. Just a slight caveat here, Illinois Central College tuition is $125 a credit hour. You could tell a student they could actually earn twice as much as their tuition is going to be per credit hour. That's a tremendous investment to be able to tell a student that information. And more than 15% of ICC's exiters in 2011 had earned 60 or more credit hours compared to a statewide average of just 9%. Furthermore, the average earnings gains per credit hour for those Illinois Central College students, $105, was $25 more than the statewide average of $80. Moving on to the third category, the relationship between earnings and program completion. The Illinois Community College statewide data says that students had the largest earnings increases in the years immediately after program completion. That makes sense. The second one, the average annual earnings of all Illinois Community College completers in FY2000 increased in each of the eight years after program completion. And then it flattened out and declined with the effects of the national recession. The third point from the statewide data, employment rates for Illinois Community College students in their first and second quarters after completing a program declined from 75.7% in FY2000 to 66.6% in FY 2012. And the last statewide data uh, on relationships between earnings and program completion. As previously noted, many community college students choose to continue their education after completing a program and do not enter the workforce immediately. So we're missing that sector uh, from that information. 
Now, Illinois Central College, what happens to these students? The average annual earnings of ICC completers in FY2000 increased in each of the nine years immediately following program completion. And it declined due to the effects of the national recession in FY2010. It was $29,000, it dropped to $28,215, and then fully recovered by 2012 when the average reached again $29,322. Second point, the percentage of ICC students who were employed during their first and second post-completion quarters remained remarkably consistent from FY2000 till FY2012, ranging between 74 and 77 percent. And lastly, as previously noted, many community college students choose to continue their education after completing a program and do not enter the workforce right away. The fourth category, and last one I'm responsible for today, was the average pre-enrollment to post-completion earnings gained. Illinois Community College, the statewide system, the average pre-enrollment to post-completion earnings gained over the eight-year period from 2005 to 2011 was $4,387, and this translates to a $2.41 per hour increase in earnings, assuming full-time, full-year employment. Now specifically what happens at Illinois Central College, the average uh, pre-enrollment to post-completion earnings gain for ICC completers over this period from 2005 to 2011 was $5,964 or a $1,577 more than the statewide average. This translates to a $3.28 per hour increase in earnings for ICC students. Think about it if you're full time. That's a pretty significant difference uh, as an uptick uh, for average. And for completer of the Associate in Applied Science degrees and long term certificate programs, those are greater than 30 semester hours. Here at Illinois Central College, the average earnings gain was $11,307 or $1,461 greater than the statewide average. And lastly, these numbers only consider the first post-completion year of employment for students who found work in Illinois. Therefore, the data is likely to understate the success of Illinois Central College students and all Illinois Community College students who may work in other states or who might be continuing their education elsewhere and report low earnings. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Irwin. Next, I'd like to introduce and welcome uh, Rod Widmer, who is the president of Heartland College. Uh, Heartland College is the youngest college in our system. Uh, sadly, you're not the youngest president, <laughs> I don't think. But I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Uh, but uh, President Widmer is going to talk to us a little bit about return on investment for a community college education. You can't have a study like this without having a lot of numbers. Uh, it's really what it's all about. Uh, and I have the opportunity today to talk a little bit, very briefly, about education at a community college as an investment. Uh, looking at it, what it all, several of those numbers that, that Dr. Irwin mentioned, how do they translate to that individual student and their earning potential or what they realize as an investment over a 40-year uh, working career? Uh, my comments really focus this afternoon on the return on investment for community college students as a whole, and then, uh, as was done for Illinois Central, uh, looking at Heartland Community College and the information we have relative to our students at Heartland Community College. <clears throat> the return on investment measure, which was one of the key uh, results or outcomes of this uh, study, uh, was derived from students that completed an associate in applied science degree or a long-term two-year certificate program and completed that in fiscal year 2011. So as it was mentioned, there's a variety of data sets here. Uh, in this particular case, it was looking at those applied degrees and uh, long-term certificates. Uh, it was not focused on transfer to a four-year institution. So uh, just to be clear on that uh, particular measure. It's also important to recognize that students attending college pay for their education both in cash, obviously, uh, and foregone earnings. While they're attending uh, college, they're not working at the time they're going to college. Many of them do work part-time, but uh, they may not be working full-time. So the study takes a look at foregone earnings as well as part of the computation. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, those foregone earnings are considered a cost or part of the investment for our students. Using that basis, the estimated cost or investment for a student attending an Illinois community college during fiscal year 10 or fiscal year 11 
those completing at the end of fiscal year 11, was $43,331. When you compare that investment with the projected earnings over a 40-year working life following their graduation, and again, some of the same criteria mentioned by Dr. Irwin when they're basing it on those, some of those first-year earnings, community college students, on average, will increase their earnings by more than $572,000. So taking some of those, those other numbers that were empirically over time, now quantifying them uh, for particular students. That $572,000 is an increase in earnings over their working, uh, working life. That translates to a present value of this investment for a community college degree to be nearly $192,000. Or more, uh, a little easier number to understand perhaps, is what's referred to as the rate of return. So your return on your investment as a student in a community college based on these numbers and this time frame for an Illinois community college student was 14.2 percent. Now if you take a look at the stock market or you take a look at uh, housing or you take a look at any number of other investments, uh, today I would take a 14.2 percent uh, rate of return or return on an investment. So uh, a really stellar uh, number there in terms of, of that investment. Looking at those numbers for Heartland and every institution, uh, every region potentially uh, may be somewhat different, but in our particular case, uh, the same analysis was conducted, the same uh, criteria in terms of the, the degrees uh, examined and the time frame examined, looking at that same uh, fiscal year 10 and fiscal year 11 completers at the end of FY11 for applied science degrees or long-term certificates. In that case, for Heartland Community College students, they experienced increased earnings over a 40-year working life of $916,000 on an investment of roughly $32,000. So taking that $32,000 investment that they made in cash and foregone earnings at, at our community college translates into projected uh, increase in lifetime earnings of $916,000 or present value on that um, investment $378,000, or in the case of the Heartland Community College student, a return on their educational investment of over 32%. So I think the, the, those kind of numbers, uh, at the, just looking at the state level and not even looking at Heartland's numbers in particular, uh, speak a lot to the value of the community college education. If you can re, uh, realize those kinds of returns on an investment in your two-year education, uh, and enter the workforce and yield those kinds of results, I think, is, is tremendous. Community colleges, and I'm sure I speak for my colleagues, uh, will continue to focus not only on providing accessible and affordable programs of study, but also supporting students in persisting to completion of their educational goals, because persistence to completion uh, is critical. In so doing, more students will be able to experience the financial benefits of their educational pursuits to the degree that we have demonstrated through this economic impact study. Next, I would like to welcome Thomas Aguiar, who is a 2010 graduate of Illinois Central College. Uh, Thomas graduated with an associate in science degree, and he is currently working for Caterpillar in a leadership development program and he also serves on Illinois Central College's Educational Foundation uh, as one of their board of directors. He's going to share with us how community colleges are providing economic opportunities for, for the graduates, and I'm sure part of that's going to be a personal story. So I'd like to welcome Mr. Aguirre. Yeah, I have just a little bit more of a uh, kind of my personal story to share a little uh, before and then how community college impacted my life and some of the opportunity I have. Uh, now, uh, so I'm, I'm originally from Mexico. I was born in Mexico. I came here as a child. Uh, I grew up just on the other side of the river with um, here in Peoria with my two brothers. My both of my parents they worked uh, you know very uh, laborious jobs their entire lives uh, at or near uh, minimum wage their entire lives and. Uh, we grew up actually, um, there was a house that, that uh, my, house, my father purchased, uh, I think it had gotten some, some fire damage, I think he purchased his house for uh, $6,000 I believe is what he said. Uh, fortunately for us, our, our parents were very um, hard, hard working, thrifty, uh, uh, 
and handy and they, they made that house a beautiful house for us they gave us a uh, a memorable childhood and um, so I I, I, uh, I reached I guess working age uh, as a young adolescent uh, I started working a number of minimum wage my jobs myself as many adolescents do or most adolescents do right so uh, you know detasseling in the cornfields washing dishes here at the local diners um, I, I did that throughout high school I barely made it through high school and I'll stress this point a little bit because it specifically ties into how community college helped me but uh, I, I had to take uh, night classes at the adult education center uh, there in Peoria just to make up for the classes I'd failed uh, just to be able to graduate because there were required classes so I, I get through uh, immediately after uh, high school I, I go to the military along with my older brother we served in, in the Marines for five well he served longer I served for five years and as I was coming home I was uh, I was 23 and I was I was thinking uh, what, you know, what was I going to do? I was going to come home. Uh, and now what am I going to do? And uh, I actually, so I benefited. I was in California. I benefited from my first, uh, let's say, community college-like or vocational school. It was uh, minimal academics. It was just direct that uh, I, I basically I earned my commercial truck driver's license in, in a matter of a few months. I came home, and I was a, a commercial driver for two years. So uh, I, I did that, and if I stop and kind of look at that already, I got, um, I look at the trajectory of where I was and, and look at one generation before me and kind of w what I was heading into. And, uh, and, and this already just it elevated my, my economic means uh, a, a good extent. I, I stepped into it. You know, this was a, um, a good professional job as a commercial truck driver. I had, uh, you know, benefits, retirement, things that, that my parents didn't enjoy. Um, and and as, after I did that for two years, uh, I, I myself decided to, you know, come back and see what else was, was here, what else I could do, uh, kind of look for something different. And I think young, and I was just, maybe it was a challenge. I was very uh, scared, had a lot of anxiety about college, and maybe that's kind of why I, I, I wanted to do it. I was very naive to the whole uh, higher education experience. Uh, a, a quick story on that, just a month before I actually started here, I was a uh, uh, I was actually still driving, and I, I called the dean of the, uh, the College of Engineering of the University of Illinois. Mind you, I have no idea that you're supposed to apply for college like a year before or that this is a top five engineering school in the country and that they're that selective. Um, he must have thought it was a prank call. I, I, ex I explained my situation. I say, look, uh, my last math class I, I took was 10 years ago, uh, sophomore year. I barely passed it, and uh, but I'm I'm very serious. I, I, I want to go to college. You know, is there any chance of even getting accepted? Should I even apply? Because there was an application fee that I was. I didn't want to just throw my money away. And he gave me um, the, the best advice that, that uh, amongst the best advice I've ever received. He said, "Your only choice is to go to community college." And and um, he said, "Work your way up. You'll you'll get built up, and then you'll have your choice of, of what to do." You know, again, I was just very naive to the whole uh, college or higher education experience. I uh, came here to ICC. I quickly found out. I, I took the placement test here. I found out I needed uh, five math classes to get to the first one that would count, um, and it was similar in other subjects. You know, so uh, now my experience at ICC. Uh, uh, I'll have to make this story very short in just a minute. Uh, um, you know, for me, I could go on, I could go on and on, and, and uh, it was an amazing, uh, countless experiences of discovering myself, of uh, personal benefit. I met my wife here. Um, so, just to make it very short, um, I started at this point that I just mentioned in the fall of 2007. I was, I was, you know, th let's say this far behind. Um, ICC or Illinois Central College here, they, they didn't leave me to fend for myself. I was given some options that uh, so they'd kind of try these things, and, and it, you won't necessarily have to take two and a half years of just remedial classes um, and, and focus on, on kind of these things. So, um, and it, it very well worked. Uh, Illinois Central College picked up a lot of what, what I had uh, failed and not picked up throughout high school, a lot of what I was lacking. Um, within one semester, I was already taking a, hand, uh, a, a few college-level classes, and after two semesters, I was just strictly at college-level classes. So, from the fall of 2007 to the spring of 2010, it was you know three short years in, in comparison, and at a, at a very good uh, you know value and cost. Um, I was graduating Illinois Central College, accepted into uh, Bradley's uh, School of Engineering, and, uh, and graduating here with honors. So I, I step forward one little bit that, that kind of ties into some of this data here. As I start Bradley, my first semester at, at Bradley's uh, 
engineering curriculum. I actually, I get a job that was uh, on the merits of me having an associate's degree and having some computer automated drawing experience. So this was a, a $25 an hour job. And for me, I mean, that was, again, just a, uh, an entire new uh, you know, level. And, and especially when you think of uh, um, the, you know, the stereotype of the starving student or so, I think I was, I, I actually, I purchased a house uh, as I started there at Bradley. And, and uh, uh, my, my wife and I at the time were engaged. We got married, uh, and, and again, a lot of this just, I think I was able to uh, distinguish myself from, from, let's say, other students going through, uh, I already had a degree, I had an associate's degree, and it already put, kind of put me a notch up. So uh, two years uh, on the dot, uh, just on time now, I, I graduated from Bradley with, a, with my engineering degree in manufacturing engineering. Um, a quick point on that, a few of the, the handful of students that transferred from here to there that we remain friends, uh, we, did, we all graduated right at the top of the class. So uh, I, for me, it confirmed some other studies. I think maybe this relates maybe to a little bit more other studies that ICCB has done, but uh, uh, I've seen some numbers showing um, the comparison of community college students and, and how they perform uh, compared to those that have gone through the four years their entire time. And, and for me, it's what I saw here from a small, a small data set, but the, the four students that I transferred with, we all graduated near the top of the class at Bradley. So it was just this uh, amazing experience for me. Uh, uh, gr graduation was uh, commencement there at Bradley was, uh, you know, I'll, I'll remember that one uh, forever. And uh, I, you know, I, I, uh, I leave Bradley and uh, I, for one, I had no desire, I think this kind of lines up, I had no desire to go anywhere but Central Illinois. And if I, if the, op the right opportunity was outside of Central Illinois, I wanted to stay as close as possible. Uh, and, uh, and for me, fortunately, a, a, an offer came that was, uh, that kept me right here in the area. And, uh, and the offer was, uh, it, it was working as, as an engineer at Caterpillar here, as, as was mentioned. So uh, my, my first year uh, out of college, uh, you know, saw me making, uh, uh, I guess, a, a little shy of a, a six-figure uh, salary income with, a, with bonus and salary. And for me, this is, uh, again, it just, uh, you know, keeps going up and up and up. Um, I, and one thing I just shared here was, uh, um, just just recently, I actually I was able to um, buy a, a house that uh, told my mom to stop working. So um, if you if you think of some of the uh, some of the background I shared here first, and I'm sorry, it's always uh, I, I sat here and shared this a number of times as I was going through here, and it's just always difficult. But uh, because uh, because it's just so meaningful. But um, I was able to do that. And so um, the last point I'll share is just a little bit. Uh, even um, beyond the, uh, the economic gain is um, just the actualization, uh, how much it did for me. So it kind of ties into the economic gain still because w w how it helped me uh, become more actualized is that now um, I'm, I'm living with a, a level of means where I can contribute some of my economic, uh, some of my economic gain to others. And it, uh, so it makes a, a big difference in my life. Thank you. The system is full of, of great stories like the one that Thomas just shared. And that's one of the reasons that everybody up here is so passionate about the work that we do to provide community college education um, to the state of Illinois. And last but not least, I would like to welcome Kurt Oldfield, who is the president of Spoon River College. And you might be the, le the youngest president we have. <laughs> He's gonna share with you a little bit about the strong economic impact um, that our colleges have on the communities they serve. Uh, Thomas's story is a story that uh, you will hear from thousands of other community colleges students uh, across the state of Illinois. Uh, part of Northern Illinois University's study was to look back at graduates from 2002 and track their earnings over a 10-year period. That tracking of their earnings and their increase of earnings over that period equated to a $13.2 billion increase of federal taxes that were paid by those students, just one class of community college graduates who attended Illinois community colleges. To think about it, think about Thomas's story and the story that he shared of starting as a minimum wage worker, uh, working a, a, here in Peoria, putting himself through high school and through college, and now the success that he's having as an engineer with a Fortune 100 company of Caterpillar. 
It's fantastic to know that the community colleges were part of Thomas's life and to be able to share that same or similar story of other community college students across the country. I too have shared an example uh, similar to Thomas. Uh, I was from a first generation, I was a first generation college student who attended uh, Spoon River College myself. Uh, never dreamed of the day that I'd be able to come back and be the uh, president of the community college that I'm so proudly a graduate of. And so my, two, my earnings also over that same period uh, has increased. And I, and I know the data will continue to grow as we look at the earnings of our graduates over a longer period of time. But for graduates who graduated in 2002, that's a substantial increase of earnings, which then funds other programs federally and statewide programs that support others in our country and in our state. The graduates from 2002 saw or helped increase the state taxes by $3.9 billion. Again, an economic engine for the state of Illinois. But to break that down to here in West Central Illinois, uh, as Dr. Irwin started, uh, Spoon River College students also helped to generate additional tax revenues. Students who graduated from Spoon River College in 2002 contributed an extra $58,320,000 of federal funds and $18,083,000 of state funds. Again, a small rural community college whose graduates are increasing their earnings, which makes our state more viable. All in all, you can see that the stories that are shared today share the importance of community colleges. They share the, important, the importance that community colleges provide to our students in providing new wage opportunities, new opportunities to grow and develop, and to contribute back to the society here in the state and also at a federal level. As Dr. Anderson said, with being the third largest community college system in the nation, our community college students and graduates are having an impact every day in the communities that we serve. Every square inch of Illinois is covered with a community college supporting those students from those areas with a very accessible, high quality, affordable education that allows them and their families to be better than the generation before them. I again want to thank the uh, team from ICC and the uh, team from Illinois Community College Board for supporting this initiative today and providing us with the opportunity to share the story of community colleges and the economic impact that they have in the communities that are served by our Illinois Community Colleges. Thank you. In closing, I'd like to say that community colleges are vital partners for economic growth of local communities in the region. Investing in Illinois community colleges pays considerable, considerable dividends to Illinois students, employers, and local communities. I would especially like to thank all of our speakers, our distinguished guests, and members of the media for joining us here today. I think you will walk away with the understanding with that community colleges change lives. And we'd love to share some more stories with you uh, when the opportunity arises. And for all of our speakers here today, the only thing I can say is your mothers must be very proud. <laughs> we'll be glad to take some questions and thank you very much. <laughs>